Hey everyone, it's Nurse Sarah, and in this video, I'm gonna go over fetal heart tone monitoring. And as always, whenever you get done watching this video, don't forget to access the free quiz. So let's get started. Fetal heart tone monitoring is used to help us assess a baby's status during that labor process. And we can measure it various ways. One way is through internal monitoring. And this is where a spiral electrode is inserted up through the cervix and put in the baby's scalp. Now this is really reliable, but it's invasive to the baby and the patient. Another way is through external monitoring. And this is where they take an ultrasound transducer and put it across the mother's abdomen. So with this, it's not gonna be as reliable as internal and it can be affected by the baby's position, but it's less invasive. Now, whenever you're looking at this fetal heart tone monitoring, there's a few things you wanna be familiar with. First up, on the top typically what you're gonna see is the fetus's heart rate. You have numbers on the side that tells you heart rate ranges, and then you're gonna have this line on this grid that's gonna be squiggly, and all it's showing you is how the baby's heart rate is trending. A normal fetal heart rate is anywhere between 110 to 160 beats per minute. And then below that, you're gonna see another line, and this line is gonna represent mom's contractions. So just to review for your maternity exams, let's talk about the little parts of a contraction. So with this on the monitoring, what you're gonna see is you're gonna be able to see the increase of the contraction when it's coming on, hence when it's building, this is the increment. Then you're gonna see the peak of the contraction, the acne, and then you're gonna see where the contraction starts to let off. It hence decreases its decrement. And then you can see the relaxation period. And this section of the monitoring is going to allow you to see mom's contractions, its frequency, its intensity, and so forth. So first up are accelerations. The word acceleration means an increase in rate. And that's what we're talking about with our baby. This is a temporary increase in the fetus's heart rate. So for a term fetus, this is a heart rate greater than 15 beats per minute above its baseline for at least 15 seconds, but no more than two minutes. And this can happen at any time. Typically what causes it is that the fetus is moving or we have contractions going on. Now for this, there's no interventions that are needed. This tells us that our baby is healthy and responding like they should and they're getting proper oxygenation. Next are early decelerations. And what you wanna remember with this is that the fetal heart rate is going to mirror mom's contractions. So the baby's heart rate is gonna stay within normal range from 110 to 160. So you will start to see that the baby's heart rate will dip at the start of mom's contractions, but it's gonna recover at the end of mom's contraction. And here on this screen, you can see, you see baby's heart rate, mom's contraction. They're literally mirroring each other. When mom's contraction starts that baby's heart rate dips a little bit but it's staying within normal and then at the end of the contraction that heart rate recovers nicely so what is the cause of this well it's resulting because of head compression the baby's head is in that canal that contraction is happening which is compressing that head well it's also compressing the vagus nerve which is temporarily causing that heart rate to fall but once that contraction starts to let up relieves that compression hence that vagus nerve is not being compressed so that heart rate recovers nicely now with this there's no intervention needed you want to continue to monitor and document early decelerations are normal and then there's variable decelerations. This is where we have these sudden sharp drops in the fetal heart rate, where it's going less than 110 beats per minute. And then eventually it will try to recover to baseline. So with this notice on the bottom, we have mom's contractions. When mom's contraction happens, all of a sudden, bam, that heart rate, it drops down and it drops so, sharply and it tries to increase and when it tries to increase it creates this like v or u shape pattern and that's how i remember this remember that variable we're talking about variable deceleration starts with v so whenever this baby's heart rate is dropping so suddenly it creates like these v like shapes now what causes this type of deceleration well it's typically caused by umbilical cord compression so whenever mom's having a contraction, it's compressing that umbilical cord. Well, when we compress the umbilical cord, that's literally baby's lifeline. That's gonna decrease oxygen. Whenever it does that, that stresses baby's heart out and hence that heart rate drops. So this is not a good thing and it requires nursing interventions. So what you wanna do is you wanna change mom's position. There's various positions you can do. You can do knee to chest or you can do Trendelenburg. This is gonna help relieve that compression and help increase oxygen in the baby so we don't drop that heart rate. You also wanna give some supplemental oxygen. So about eight to 10 liters, whatever your protocols say, 
be a mass to mom so we can get some oxygen to baby. If mom has Pitocin running, you want to stop that because it can make this worse. And if need be, you need to perform a vaginal exam to see if you do have maybe cord prolapse and contact the midwife or doctor because we need immediate intervention. And then lastly, we have late decelerations. These decelerations are called late because the baby's heart rate is dropping later, hence after the peak of mom's contractions and doesn't recover until well after that contraction has ended. And here you can see that we have mom's contraction and then baby's heart rate drops after the peak of that contraction and doesn't recover until well after that contraction is over. Now, what is causing this type of deceleration? Well, it's typically caused by utero placental insufficiency. So that placenta is not working like it should. It's not delivering the oxygen that the baby needs. So this is not good. It requires intervention. Therefore, what you're gonna do, you're gonna do one of the steps that you did for variable. You're gonna change mom's position. You are going to administer oxygen. You're gonna stop Pitocin if it's infusing. Also, you may be required to infuse fluids because this will help provide some perfusion to the placenta and you want to notify that midwife or doctor because this patient needs immediate intervention and probably needs an emergency c-section okay so that wraps up this review and if you're studying for your maternity exams and you'd like some more resources to help you study i have a study guide you can get at nursesarah.com in digital format or you can get this at amazon.com in paperback